Hi, everybody. We're here. It's Dan, Center Stage Dan, and oh, no. locked off that camera awesome. position Jason here live Smart. to talk about new new things, Dan. You and I both have spent since last, what, Wednesday when the uh, when the FedEx person arrived. Shows up with a box full of things. Uh, you using, sign over your life. Using announced but not yet released Apple products. And so uh, you had the Mac Mini. Which is perfect because you are a person who's been waiting for the new Mac Mini to come out, and then look at that—you ended up getting a little, a uh, little uh, package from Apple, and I—I I got a large package from Apple, a gigantic laptop full of an M2 <laughs> Max processor. So we've been spending the last uh, six days, five days with that. So uh, this is a YouTube stream. If you're watching live on YouTube, that's where you are. Welcome to YouTube.com. And you can leave a comment uh, if you've got a question. Uh, if you want to say something mean, I mean, don't. But if you have a question for us, you've got two people here who've been using the new products for all this time, and we could maybe answer them or at least try. Um, Dan, what? Before we get started with that, uh, you have yes. an overview, like big thoughts about the Mac Mini. Yeah, um, it's interesting. As I said in my review, I, I feel like there's a couple different computers here, right? Because I mean, so I tested the M2 Pro, which is the high end of the lineup. Um, that comes itself in a couple different flavors. Uh, Apple sent me the best processor version, uh, which has 12 cores of CPU, I believe, and nine, 19 GPU cores. Um, and then there is, of course, just the, the sort of standard vanilla M2 option as well, uh, which is, you know, I think the biggest sort of news there is it costs 599 at the base level, which is uh, 100 bucks less than the old uh, M1 Mac Mini cost. And I think it's kind of fascinating to see the disparity between like, here's our low cost computer, uh, it gets you in the door, and it's a, it's a really good computer, right? I mean, it's just basically the same thing as in the M2 MacBook Air. Uh, and then at the, the high end, you have something that goes up closer towards like a, uh, a Mac Studio. So the, the Mini continues to be a incredibly versatile prod, product in Apple's lineup. And it does a great job of filling in all of the various like gaps that they that might exist. You know, you think like, oh, well, they've got an iMac, but I need something with a little more power. It's like, well, you've got the M2 Pro Mac Mini. It's like, oh, well, they've got the iMac, but it starts at, you know, whatever, $1199, 1299 I need something that's a little cheaper. Well, they've got the Mac Mini at 599 So it, it really does manage to do a good job of covering a lot of bases. Uh, and no matter which one you get, the impressive thing in the story of Apple Silicon continues to be, the performance is great. The performance is great no matter which one you're using. And, oh, you know, the, the vanilla M2 will suffice for a lot of people's daily needs. And if you need that little bit extra power, the M2 Pro is pretty good. And there's, you know, more power beyond that, obviously, as you're going to talk about. But, like, you know, a lot of the basic and lower level configurations will really get the job done for the vast majority of consumers. Yeah, I mean, I, I keep saying you know who you are if you need more than that. But, like... uh what I said on Upgrade earlier today is I have friends of mine who say, oh, my kid needs a new laptop or I need a new laptop. And they are worried that like the low end Apple laptop isn't going to be able to do it. And mm -hmm. I just end up saying to them, oh, no, it, it, it can do anything. Literally anything you try, it will do because I know who you are and I know what you're going to attempt. And you're not going to try to render an enormous 3D object in a piece of software that costs a lot of money. Uh, that professionals use, right? And so, therefore, like, it's not even a question. It's not going to be a problem. It, You're going to be it fine. It didn't used to be the way, too, did right? Not. I think that's the thing that people struggle with, is, like, this did not used to be the state of affairs in computing. And the Apple Silicon transition has really made it that, like, it doesn't really matter what level you start at. Like, we start at meeting and probably exceeding your needs, and we only go up from there. Yeah, it's absolutely true. What, do you think it's fair? I've been telling people um, that it's essentially two computers, right? There's the, the yeah, M2 and absolutely. the M2 Pro. And like the M2, yeah, it is very powerful really for regular use. And then the M2 Pro, it's nice that we have that thing that you've been writing about for the last year and a half, which is like, where's that slot between, I mean, really since the Mac Studio came out, yeah, especially exactly. between that M1 Max, which is kind of overkill for most people, and uh, but but a little more capability, not just processor speed, but video out and uh, some other stuff in the base model the RAM, M yeah, chip, all that stuff, right? And yeah, so no, I, that, I, I think that's computers. great. Yeah, no, it's two computers. Absolutely, I I actually wish they'd done a better job of marketing it that way. They do put in that weird middle ground <laughs> configuration that is 
200 bucks more and just has more storage. Yeah. And I find that perplexing because even with the good, better, best thing, which I know they like to do, the MacBook Air in the Mac Studio, Don't they do have it. two. Right. There's only two. And you're like, why well, did you put that there? It's some, a silly Somebody in marketing won the, won the argument this time. They, t- they yeah. wore them down and they uh, tired them out. There you go. Um, I have the MacBook Pro here, and I'm going to do one of those things since I'm di- directing this. I'm going to switch to the overhead shot because, you know, I I paid for a reclaimed wood desk, and I'm going to use it for videos. So <laughs> Reclaim some wood, Jason. I did. So here we have, I got the uh, uh, 16-inch MacBook Pro. Dan doesn't get to see this, or he gets to see it very delayed on the YouTube stream. Uh, I just want to call your attention to the uh, color match. Oh, I can actually switch to my other view, my uh, exciting... Uh, desk view here thanks continuity camera uh just to show you the color match on the uh on the uh on the magsafe port just because some people care about that it was a little silly that you got a silver one no matter what uh macbook pro you bought on the m1 models on the m2 they're doing what they did with the uh the macbook air which is actually color matched to the color of the laptop so this is space gray it's got a space gray thing um, and then if I go back to my overhead shot here too, um, it's huge. I mean, I'm just, I know if you love a 16 inch laptop, well, guess what? This is one of those. It's gigantic. Um, I don't understand it because I am a MacBook Air kind of person, but, um, but it's big and the battery is enormous. And, uh, and, you know, I think like one of the reasons you get this to go back to these side views is the ports, right? I mean, you've got yeah. you, you, your two Thunderbolt. Um, four on this side along with MagSafe and the headphone jack and on the other side flip it around you got your SD card slot you got another Thunderbolt and you got the HDMI 2.1 which has even more uh, uh, video out than you've ever been able to see on a on a Mac before uh, so a lot of, a lot of video out power there and of course if you're one of those people who runs uh, in lid closed uh, at your desk uh, you need a MacBook Pro because the MacBook Air will not drive uh, more than one. So if you're a multi-monitor person, you're going to want a MacBook Pro anyway. And yes, on my desk here, just while we're at it, the large power adapter that comes with it because it's got a, a big battery to charge. And then here's my color matched uh, MagSafe cable. And yes, there's there's my continuity camera right there. So it's a weird concession yep. to color there, given that, uh, I mean, the, the all of these products are available in only a couple options now, right? I mean, so the MacBook... Pro only available in what silver and is it still space gray? Yeah, still space, space gray. Space gray still exists. Still does. Haven't gotten rid of that. Nope. Uh, and the Mac Mini available only in silver. The space gray option, which was the previously the Intel version, uh, no longer exists. So it's space. It's a silver or nothing. Here's my which overhead. Is a uh, just as a contrast, I'm going to put my MacBook Air on top of the uh, 16 inch. Just to, if you wonder how much bigger it is, it's a lot bigger. And then also that's the difference between Space Gray and Midnight, if you were wondering. Midnight is extremely, extremely dark compared to Space Gray. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the story there, my little tiny MacBook Air. Oh, oh there we go. So, Dan. Yes. Uh, lots of Mac Mini stuff, lots of MacBook pro stuff let's jump into it ryan um said the mac mini is underrated on its portability i commute to work 30 minutes every day with a mac mini in my backpack look at that (laughs) that's awesome i mean yeah it's not a big machine it fits in a bag i mean i wouldn't i just wouldn't want to deal with unplugging it and and shutting it down and all that jazz but like i don't know it's fine if if you're not working on your vehicle of transit mode whatever it might be if you're not working on that because that that would be hard but i was literally uh, telling the story the other day where i was in a coffee shop when i used to back when i used to do most of my work in coffee shops where i saw somebody bring a flat screen white imac in (laughs) it's like if people are doing that you can probably bring a mac mini it's fine why not uh eddie says he just ordered the 14 inch m2 pro hoping this will finally be my one machine what do you guys think i mean i've heard from a lot of people who are using the macbook pro as their only uh docking at the desk i docked a macbook air at my desk for yeah. years and it was fu- actually that was back in the era where um lid closed mac laptops were really actually kind of unreliable i can't tell you how many times i got home and pulled my macbook air out and it was hot because it mm-hmm. had been it was mm-hmm. in some sort of like not quite a sleep mode uh after i unplugged it from my display but uh apple's gotten a lot better with that software over the years and um the power is I mean the power is immense. I think you could your one machine could be a MacBook Air. It's certainly a MacBook Pro is gonna yeah. 
I take care. I was a MacBook Air only person for several years until I got an iMac. So yeah, it, no no question. I mean, that was an Intel 11 inch MacBook Air, and it was my only computer for several years. So no question, you, a MacBook Pro will do just fine for you. Simon asks, any reason for someone looking at getting a Mac Mini should still look at an M1? I honestly don't think so. I mean, the M2 is cheaper. You could probably find an M1 Mac Mini at a discount. You could probably get it cheaper. I don't think it's going to be so much cheaper that the you know, performance difference isn't worth it. I got to be honest. I mean, if you just want to get a base level, I mean, I guess if you want to get a spec'd up M1 and worry about that over an M2, but the, the M1 Mac Mini didn't even offer that much in terms of additional options like you get more storage or more ram i guess but it's still maxed out at 16 gigabytes so uh, unless you are on the strictest of budgets i guess i would say probably not yeah i I, unless you can get a really good deal right or my i was envisioning i mean we're talking like like two or three hundred bucks right like well i was thinking nicely or 599 with way better specs than the 599 m2 mini maybe right like 599 but more ram and more yeah. storage maybe maybe but again i think in most cases that 599 mac m2 mac mini is really the kind of a sweet spot yeah so okay here here's one from uh helena symphony i have the macbook air m2 and when rendering a 4k project out of final cut pro is it still 10 i don't know anymore the air takes less time with the same project files off the same drives less time than what i don't know for the so the uh, macbook pro m2s are how amazing uh there's some weird stuff going on here um the the um m2 and m2 pro have i think the same uh decoding and encoding blocks and the m2 max has double has two of them instead of one and in the final cut results that we published that i think is why the M2 Mac Mini that Dan had, which has the Pro, and the other M2, like the Air, had similar Final Cut export yeah. scores. And the Studio and my 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Max chip and the Studio with the Max chip uh, were twice as fast. I think it comes down to the fact that there are two of those encoding blocks that are dedicated hardware inside the Max chip, and there's only one inside the Pro oh, chip, it's... and there's only one inside in M2. There's one inside the M2 chip right. that wasn't there for the M1. Right, because that was a change Apple made when they went to the M2, was they borrowed something that had went in the M1 Pro and up and moved it down to the M2, but now the M2 and the M2 Pro perform pretty similarly in that regard. Yeah, exactly right. Um, Josh says, why is the cable white? I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it, it's, I mean, I love the detail orientation here. This cable actually isn't white. It is, it is gray and it is basically color matched. And if I reach over here and pull out my MacBook air cable, it is, it is midnight. So they are color matched pretty well. Of course, the tip of it and the block is white, but the, the there's, actual, there's no winning actual wrap is, uh, is a color, pretty good color match. Um, also, I think Kevin Ham is the hell in the symphony. Just not the, the whole symphony didn't write in, <laughs> although we love to be supported. By I you know, the arts. I appreciate we are fans of the arts. And, uh, yeah, if symphony has questions for us, we have, we have answers for the symphony. All right. Verge review of the MacBook pro says one of their tests caused the fans to blast and the keyboard got hot. Did you experience any situation during your testing where it got hot and or loud hot? Okay. Um, when the GPUs run, in fact, maybe I should actually run a GPU test here. Um, let's see. Oh, live on the air. We're doing it live. I mean, we could do it live. I was going to run a GPU test and we were going to see, um, if I can get it to yell at me. I, so the Verge review, um, when you when you push the GPU is when the fans go off. When you push the CPU, I, I had the CPU cores running at 100% every single core, and it killed the battery in two and a half hours. Um, but uh, it, the fans were never audible. I mean, I'm sure they were running, but they were never audible to me, and I my hearing's pretty good. Um, it is when the GPU kicks in that it really throws off a lot of heat. The fans have to go. I would say when the CPU tests were going on, you know, you could tell almost immediately that the underside of the laptop got warm, but it never really felt hot. It was never really uncomfortable. Um, and the keyboard didn't feel hot. So I, I, I don't know about that, but I will say that when the GPU t- 
tests are running like this one is now, um, after a little bit, the uh, the fans started blowing. So this is GFX Bench, and we'll just uh, let it run and and see what happens. But anyway, that that's my answer um, about that. It's just uh, I di- I didn't on the Mac Mini side. I never noticed the fans coming on, and I don't know if that's a combination of the fans being extremely quiet or. Or the overall cooling sort of profile of the mini being superior, right? Unlike the laptop, you don't have to pack everything into such a tight space. There's more open air potentially and more airflow in the mini. So I think that helps a lot. Certainly not, as Jason said, with anything, you know, putting the CPUs to maximum. I put my watch up, my Apple watch with the decibel meter up there. I did not notice any major change. Uh, I never heard anything. I was like sticking my ear up against it. I couldn't hear anything going. So it's a great I, sign I, for all those people who are upset about the Mac Studio having its fan on all the time, I, right? To me, it seems it seems whisper quiet. I honestly can't even hear that it's running. I keep thinking I'm hearing noise, and then I realize it's my Synology down in like the corner. It's like, nope, that's that's the Synology, yeah. not the Mini. And I'm a little skeptical of people saying sort of like, oh well, the M M1 was absolutely silent, and the M2 is noisier. Um, I. I mean, I don't want to. I, I don't know what those experiences were. My experience is that if you kill the GPU on either of them, it will crank up the fans. That's just what it will do. The GPU is where all your heat really gets generated. That's where the thermal envelope uh, really comes into play much more than it is the CPUs, like by a lot. And if you've got 30 GPUs, by a lot, lot, right? That's when it's going to start to scream. Um, Joey wants to know, is that base unit's eight gigs of RAM viable? It feels like two tabs of Chrome could eat that with no problem. There are a lot of RAM questions in the comments and a lot of RAM discussion as I'm not surprised. And, you know, we've talked about this before, but it is kind of, again, another place where the conventional wisdom, I think is challenged a little bit by the way Apple has chosen to do things here. This unified memory architecture, which debuted with the M1 is, different in the way that it works it's not to say that more ram doesn't allow you to do more stuff uh that's certainly the case but eight eight gigabytes of ram on on the you know m2 is not entirely an apples to apples comparison with eight gigabytes of ram on an old intel macbook it's just not the same beast and it's hard to explain exactly why that's the case other than just the stuff's on the chip, basically, right? It's got a much bigger memory pipeline. It's much easier to access and share amongst everything. So 8 gigabytes is very capable for a, for a, a Apple Silicon. Did you say gigabytes? Gigabytes. Hold on to your gigabytes, Jason. Okay. Hold, I'm holding them. Hold on. I'm holding them. Lee, Lee also said, would you recommend doing 16 gigs of RAM or stick with 8 and upgrade the storage to 512? That's a that is a a <laughs> that's a dilemma, right? I, I mean, here's my feeling. I feel like you can never get more RAM, right? Like that's the problem. Whatever RAM you buy with this computer is the RAM you will have if you have the money, and that's what it comes down to. Because Apple still charges a good amount if you want to, um, you know, upgrade the RAM. But if you can afford to upgrade the RAM, you you always buy as much RAM as you can afford. That's generally the the way it works, and you know you won't. No one's ever sad that they have too much RAM. No one's like, well, you know, well, probably would. I mean, and even but storage you can add on, yeah. right? That's the I mean, thing. you can storage get by. You can, you can get by with eight, but storage you can add on. I mean, if you're on a laptop, you can't on inter- add on internally. Although even there, you could probably stick in an SD card, and even though it's slow, you could offload some stuff. But certainly, sure. you can get a really nice external SSD and offload stuff. It, it's not as nice as having more that you don't have yeah. to offload, but you can do it. Whereas with the RAM, once it's built, it's it's like that forever. So uh, that's why, what tips me toward Ram. Um, I've done eight, eight's okay. 16 is nicer. Um, and what, what is it? 256 is the base. Yeah. Um, I find that a little low, it's but painful. You, might, you might get by. It's painful. I my just learned that my our Mac friend... mini <laughs> server, which is an Intel Mac mini server has 128. Oh, that's too small. It's terrible. It's fine but, for an iPhone, I think, but not. But yeah, yeah. Our friend, I just learned recently our friend Glenn Fleischman uh, boots off an external SSD on his computer, which sounds like does. madness. But I will say the the Mac Mini uh, M2 Pro model that Apple sent me has uh, 16 gigs. Um, I did not notice any issues with the stuff that I'm doing. I ran some Logic stuff. I played some games. Whatever. 16 gigabytes did not seem to be 
running into any thresholds. Uh, possible eight gigs might have seen um, just some more slowdowns, but I, I don't really know how to judge that. So, yeah, always prioritize RAM storage if you can afford it after that. But, yeah. Brick Window says, sorry if I missed it. Uh, is there consensus on the value of a base Mac Studio versus M2 Mini with some spec bumps? Well, in, this is a big conversation, and uh, I know, Jason, you you were talking on Upgrade just earlier today about some of this, and I think there's some truth to what you said, which is as you spec stuff up, you're specking up both machines, therefore it's kind of like there's always a little bit of increase, but I think there is a point like where there's a little bit more, the decision gets harder in terms of like, because the M2 Pro, for example, is like you spec up some of it to match where the M1 Max is already in terms of things like cores, right? Like so the the better M2 Pro chip has more performance cores, which is more on par with the M1 Max. It has a few more GPUs, so you get closer to the M1 Max. You still will be lower in other places, right? Like the RAM, I think, is lower in the base M1 Max than you can upgrade in the M2 Pro. So there is a point there where it gets a little bit like, you know, around two thousand dollars. Can you spec out something that's roughly close in the M1 Mac Studio versus the M2 Pro Mac Mini? Yeah, but there's still trade-offs, right? Like if you need really more stuff with the, the, that's like graphics heavy, I think the Studio does still outpace it a bit. But if you're not doing that, the answer is you can probably get by with the M2 Pro Mac Mini, and you can probably still save a little money. Like as we were discussing before, like where do you make those cuts? What things do you decide to upgrade? So I, I think you know myself, I, I ran into that same issue looking at the the prices and thinking, well, you know, you get you start getting into into intro entry level Mac Studio territory, but you're still making trade offs, right? It's not, I think, clean cut necessarily. Yeah, the studio is going to cost you several hundred dollars more, I think, if you if you really try try to keep the RAM and storage equal. And um, like you said, Dan, you know, so much of what's in the studio is it, it, it does have that extra video encode, which is nice if you're doing a lot of video. Um, and it's got the GPUs, right? And so if you're doing GPU stuff, but so many so many things we that a lot of people do, even high end users, are not killing the GPUs. They're just right. not. They're CPU yeah. bound. Or they're disc bound. I, I will tell you, or the one bound. thing that would have made this just much more like easy for me to say M2 Pro Mac Mini all the time is ports on the front. That's the one thing the studio still brings. And it's a stupid little thing that I feel like, Apple, come on, you were willing to concede that some people like ports on the front. I, I just set up today the, uh, the I, Apple ID security key thing, and I'm like where you put in your like USB-C security key when you're logging into your Apple ID. I'm like, I have to reach behind my monitor to plug a thing in. And if it's something you're taking in and out all the time, like a flash drive, I don't have to go behind my Mac Mini. Come on. Okay, just behind the scenes, because this happened to me today, because I'm trying to show you th that I absolutely agree to you. The overhead shot that I've got here is coming from a camera mounted up there. <laughs> And then where does the cable go? Well, I want to I wanted to plug it in. I could have plugged it into the studio display, I guess. But what did I actually do? Oh, it's plugged into the front of my Mac <laughs> Studio because I was like, "Oh, my ports are taken up." And I thought, "No, no, no. I have two more ports." ports. Yeah. That's it. That would would it kill the Apple to put some ports on I, the front? I kind of I, I kind of agree, but then again, maybe that's their differentiator there. I I think though, <laughs> I mean Coming back to the two, it's two different Macs. Is yeah. Yeah. the the Pro? You can save some money if you don't need the ports and the yeah. the extra video encode block and the all those GPUs. Yeah. Uh, you can, and I feel like even though people are going to be tempted by the Mac Studio, I feel like it's a pretty clear break there. Where the good news is you can save yourself some money yeah. and not have to buy a two thousand dollar Mac Studio. Sure. Yeah. And that's good. Like that, I think that's really good. Or, or if you're somebody who's like, yeah, and it has to be terabyte internal. Well, I mean, the price numbers change, but the difference doesn't change. Then you're talking yeah. about a whatever twenty five hundred dollar Mac Studio and a twenty two hundred dollar Mac Mooney. You're still gonna save money. I call I called it a Mac Mooney there. Uh, so butts. <laughs> it, yeah, it's got three point four gigabytes in your Mac Mooney. In your Mac Mooney, it's live, people. <laughs> it's live. Um, let's see a lot of eight gig Ram things where, which people are asking about. Um, and I, I agree with you and, and there's like, Jacob has the statement in here, which is it's fine for almost all daily work, unless it's Ram intensive, which of course, but like, I agree. I, I feel like 
having more RAM it feels nicer and safer, but even in eight, it's usable. It it it, it is, especially given how fast the SSD is and like even yeah, if you're paging gonna, to Am disk, I gonna get thirty two gigabytes in my M two Pro Mac mini? Probably. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, if you're made of money. I guess. I don't know. I just like I like having lots of RAM. <laughs> Can I say? Yeah. Do you feel that 256 is too well uh, is too little as the baseline? Are they cheaping out there? I do think 256. I mean, it's right at the edge. I've gotten by. I've traditionally bought less storage on almost all my devices. Like I went down to the 128 gigabyte iPhone when I could. When they started making that available in the Pro, I had a 512 gigabyte iMac. Um, a terabyte's nice, but I've also I just I've gotten to the point where I don't like as much having everything on my device. I like having stuff network accessible so I can get at it from my my desktop, my laptop, my iPhone, my iPad, all of that. So having I've you know relied a lot more on cloud storage, whether it be Dropbox or iCloud, and I've also relied a lot more on offloading stuff archivally to my network attached storage device because I just don't need to have all of those files at my fingertips all the time. So for me, especially, the big chunks are the like podcast files that I, I spend a lot of time in. Jason and I have talked about this, but like, you don't need to keep them all there, right? Like, I probably, first of all, I probably don't need to keep them all, but that yeah, is right. the pack rat side. But then you can like compress them up, throw them up on a server, and if you need them, they're there, but they don't need to take up the space on your main drive. Right. So, unless you really are committed to having everything on your main drive, I think you can get by with less, but I do think 256 is like. It's just right at the edge, you know. It's the if you keep everything in the cloud, and now I'm trying to remember. Actually, I've got my MacBook Air here in front of me, which I think actually only has, I think it has less than that. I think it has 256 potentially, but I need to find yeah, I think, it. Yeah, I think my Air is 256. Yeah, it's got 256. Like I can get by with 256 on a laptop. Like I try to keep nothing on there basically, um, but yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely. <laughs> trickier i might even phrase it this way which is you could do eight gigs in 256 you could do the base model yeah. um I, I like the base model air same thing right you can do it you you may suffer from time to time but mostly not and yeah. at least from the storage standpoint yeah you can offload it to a server in your house or uh, an external hard drive and uh and, and options. have some strategies there i laughed at jeremiah jordan's comment which is i keep my mac mini facing backward that solves the port problem for sure <laughs> very nice that, yeah that's one way to do it it's one way to do it i mean if you if you don't like you know you care about having your desk all nice and clean and everything which i can never get because i still end up with cords running over my desk yeah. Um, but yeah, it does. It does make more. You don't need to look at the front. Do what, what does I did. The front tell you. Stick, it, it tells you the machine is on. Stick That's the computer under it. your desk, and then uh, there are fewer cords. Indeed. Uh, Joshua says, "Do you think somewhere down the line Apple will reduce the cost of upgrades? Some of these prices are ridiculous. I know it's wishful thinking. I mean, to a certain extent, it is wishful thinking. But I also think that that what happens is the upgrades change and." You know, I, I as Apple Silicon goes on, I don't know. I, I feel like some of these uh, differentiators won't be as as big a price difference as they are now. But I don't know. This is this is Apple's. I mean, they're not they're not wrong on one level, right? These are deeply integrated. The storage and especially the RAM, it's in the package, right? At the same time, it also means there's no competition and Apple gets to yeah. charge what they want. Um, I I think that Mac users ought to get used to the idea that your Instead of buying a computer and then thinking I'll spend money on it over time in order to update it, that's yeah. been fading away. And I would say it's now officially like just gone. Um, all, you're all in. You get a new Mac, you're all in. You buy it as it's going to be for its entire life. And then you use it until you're ready to move on. And I think that we're going to all have to just sort of get used to that and that, that the upsells I mean, are going to be high prices. Yeah. In, in some ways, I think uh, like – you know, the computers were kind of an aberration in that regard. There's most of the other stuff that you buy in your life. You don't spend time souping up, right? Your TV, it's the same TV as when you bought it, right? You probably didn't add anything to your TV. Yeah. Even your car, right? Like, you know, it's... It, I mean, there's some people... Really... There's some, some people, people who upgrade like, their cars, always some people, but I think mostly but... it was a fallacy of upgrades. Like I want to yeah, make it available exactly. and then it became less and less realistic. And now it's just not. Possible. It's just more packaged, right? Everything is more packaged. It's more of an appliance. Yes. And we benefit, be. yeah. right? Like the, the system yeah. in the package, we benefit with the, the, the shared pool of Ram and the speed that is attached that close. Um, but there, the downside is it is what it is and it can't, it can't be more at this point. Yep. 
Yep. Greg has a good one here. Not that long ago, it felt like there were gotchas in Apple's lineup. It feels like Apple Silicon era has really changed things where most products are good enough. Are there any <laughs> gotchas left? Like, are we talking about products and how they're positioned, basically? I think I think of two off the top of my head. I already referenced the 7 Well, the Mac <laughs> Pro is a gotcha. It's Intel. Oh, don't get it. Don't yeah, buy don't it. Don't buy it. That 799 Mac Mini configuration I already mentioned. It's not really a gotcha, but it's it's silly. Uh, I would say the is the the 13 inch MacBook Pro is still in it's still in the lineup, right? The one with the Touch Bar. Is there still is that yeah. still at the bottom end there? Yeah. I that's I don't think you should buy that. That feels like a gotcha. It's just there to hold down a price point and to and to sell to corporate buyers who insist on right. buying a MacBook Pro. You need a MacBook Pro. Yeah. But it's 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 old technology. The Touch Bar is not being updated. I would I would kill it. Uh, the only other thing in there is maybe the M1 Air, but the M1 Air is still a great laptop. Do you it's hear just, it? Just oh yeah, very faintly. The fan is going now, so just very exciting, everybody out there. I did it. You ran. You got the fan I, running. I well ran done. the GPU all this time, and it's only in the last little bit it's like that 20 the fan minutes. the fan yeah. has come on, and it's been a while. Yeah. Um, so there you go. You can do it. Yeah. And it and it and it is not quiet, but it took a lot of work in and and it was heavy GPU work for that to yeah. actually happen. But yeah, that that nine ninety nine MacBook M one Air again, you know, it makes sense for the holding down the sub thousand dollar. Like Apple should really get the M two Air to that point because it feels like where you want to be. But I don't know. I would go so far as calling it a gotcha. I just think it's it's a very strategic product. Yeah, I don't know if there are any other gotchas. That 13-inch MacBook Pro is a good example of that. Um, I don't know. The Apple Silicon lineup is pretty strong. Um, it's pretty strong. Even like the M1 iMac. I know the M1 has been out a while now, but M1 and the and the 90, 999 MacBook Pro. I mean, or MacBook Air. We can roll our eyes at the fact that they have kept it yeah, around, exactly. but like, it's a good it's price. Great. <laughs> Right, it's a great computer. That's I wish exactly. I wish the M2 was nine ninety nine, but it's not, and the M1 is still a great computer, and it's nine ninety nine. It's actually a great deal, mm -hmm. even today, even in twenty twenty three. That's a good computer, and so yep. is the M1 I'm still, iMac. It, I mean, I this is this is my M1 Air right here. It's still working fine, mm -hmm. as, as sad as it makes me, because I love the M2 Air. It looks great, but I you know, can't justify it. Still getting it done. Do we know how fast the SSD is in the base M2 Mini? I don't think any reviewer, as far as I'm aware, got a base M2 Mini. So I don't think we know for certain. This was an issue with the base M2 MacBook Air, I believe, right? It was a slower SSD in there, I right, think. Because they only had one bank. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think we know yeah, for strangely, sure. Strangely, they gave us all the higher end configurations to Weird. review. Hmm. Weird. So I would wait. You know, if you're in the market, wait a couple weeks just for the benchmarks to come in. Somebody will somebody will figure it out when they get one. Somebody will post it online. There will be a story somewhere about how it does or does not have that. So if it's a concern, wait it out a couple more days. Um, I'm looking at the comments here. Uh, see if we got anything more. Somebody asked if there's an SD slot on the Mini. There oh, yeah. is not. Nope. So if you need that, uh, you know. Not the place Attach for it. Attach a card reader to Attach your monitor. Attach a card reader. That's what you're doing. Yep. Probably. Or or to the back of your Mac Mini. I have never had... I don't think I've... Oh, no. My old... I'm looking over at the... My old 2017 iMac is over in the corner. It does have a card slot. Never used it. I've literally never used a oh. card slot on any Mac I have. I don't have anything that takes cards. I have I have with my, my audio recorder uh, mm. has an SD card. And uh, I have a couple of cameras that have SD cards. And so yeah, I have, I, it's not a, it's not high on my list of things, but, but I have used, I've used the SD slot on my Mac studio when we were doing oh yeah, in lockdown, when my wife was doing uh, YouTube videos of her, um, library story times, mm. uh, they recorded, we're a very professional operation here. So she was recorded on a lav mic with my zoom recorder. And so then I would have to pull the audio off of that and hand it to the editor who was one of my children. <laughs> And then they put the final files together. So I have definitely used put that SD card slot to work, but but you can get a an adapter. It's not great, but you can do it. Yeah. Um. Still looking here, see if there are other questions. Somebody pointed out the uh, seven core no Ethernet, two fewer ports uh, iMac is a potential. I think gotcha. It's not the best configuration. I agree that really oh, the big low end iMac. IMAC. Yeah. yeah, that's it's not great, but and again, it serves to hit a price point. I think more than anything. Um, but it's, you know, for a certain class of user, it will be fine. It's just not a thing that I think most people who care about their computers would probably want. 
And uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of support for the idea that the 256 storage option probably is just the one bank instead of the two. And so it'll be half the speed. Uh, that's probably true. Maybe that is why they have that 799 Mac mini configuration there for you. And Lee made a nice comment about the M1 Air saying, one of the best deals out there, especially compared to an iPad Pro. Ouch, burn. Mine does yep. everything I've thrown at it, including Logic Pro. It's true. Like, oh, I, yeah? I was saying, uh, I, this might have been on Upgrade too, um, that most of the work that most of us do, even if we do some heavy media work, is perfectly well done on an M1 or an M2 Air even, or a Mac Mini. And the worst of it, for me at least, it would just take longer, right? Like a render yes, right. or a or a um, bounce. Yeah, or a bounce or some audio yeah. effect plugin um might take more time. Like my D reverb thing that I do, like oh, it took 30 minutes instead of 10 minutes. Well, I mean that's 20 minutes that I had to wait to get that file. Sure. That's true. Yeah. But it still did it, right? And that's it, I, that is a it's different than the demos that Apple gives where you like you're loading that 3D scene of a spaceship. And um, they point out that it's the size of it. It won't even fit into RAM on a PC laptop. Right, right. It's like, okay, yeah. that's fair. But that is way... It's way at the up. edge there. Yeah, <laughs> the I, high I, end for me. Prior to having this mini on my desk, I've been using an M1 Air as my only computer for the last six months or so. So I... And it has handled everything that I've thrown at it. Uh, I have not run into a single case where yeah. it could not do what I want to do. Like I said, sometimes it's slower than you'd like, but it's not, first of all, it's not slow by, by any definition. And it's just a matter of more time. Do you have the Mac mini there? I, I mean, you should, yes, I do. You should show it off even though it all looks right. um, exactly like a Mac mini. Oh yes. If you ever seen a Mac mini, mm. uh, then allow me to show to you a, a Mac mini uh, M2. Here it is. Oh, Oh, what? it looks totally different. Yeah, it's hooked up to, as you can see, a studio display, which is on an arm. I think I'm using every single port back there that I could possibly are you, be using. Are you at speaking this point. to me on your from that Mac yes, Mini? Yes, this is this is what I am on Ooh, right now it's at this self, very moment. It's shooting itself, shooting its. Wow. I you know I had that moment of like you know this is the one thing that will probably convince me for the M2 Pro really is like again. I, there's four USB-C slash Thunderbolt ports here. I think I'm using almost all of them. I think I unplugged just one recently to move it to the monitor, but I've got my Ethernet, uh, you know, and I'm even using the USB-A ports because I've got oh, some yeah. stuff that needs USB-A, yeah, uh, which sure. is another big plus there. Um, but yeah, it is a it is a Mac Mini. If you've seen one, you've kind of seen them all. Yeah, that's true. At least since they, they had the really tall one. Yeah. That was a long time ago now. Long time ago. Karen Healy with a very focused comment that he uses his card uh, reader to update boot images for his SE30 and Quadra 700. It's true. A lot of retro computing relies on the SD card thing. My, I think my, uh, my, it's right over this shoulder. Uh, my little uh, floppy emu here is the same deal. It's an SD card. And my, uh, my Raspberry Pi an SD card. I do all that stuff using the SD. Look, the SD card readers are everywhere. That's fine. It's, uh, it's nothing just against not against them. I just haven't used them. Yeah, no I don't, need. I, it's not that come up. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, Tech Floyd says M1 Air refurb, best option ever. It's a pretty good deal. Refurbs. I, I love shopping it, for refurbs. Everybody, yeah, everybody out there who's like, oh, no, refurb, I'm scared. Take it from us, the, sorry, yeah. us. I got to do the geography <laughs> right. Uh, people who do this for a living, I buy refurbs. I, absolutely. Yeah. They're, it's they're a great good. Way to save they're, money. They've gone through the Apple process. Um, Apple is standing by them. They're yeah. warranted. They yeah. are a lot of times it's literally somebody takes it and then brings it back a week later and says, I actually don't want this. And it's an open box and it's used. And so they, they, they refresh it, uh, rewrap it up and they yeah, send the, it to you. It's a great deal. Only, the only challenge you'll find is what's available is just very hit or miss, right? Like if you're looking for a specific configuration, you know, that's kind of tricky. But if you're looking for just like, I need something <laughs> like it's a great option. So I've, I've recommended it for lots of people. Here's one. Joe says I have an M one max MacBook pro connected to studio display and raid for photos. Thinking about a decked out M two pro mini as a standing desktop setup. Should I just wait for the new M two studios? <laughs> Joe, we don't know if the M two studio yeah. will ever exist. There are actually no reports that it will exist, which I, as a, 
person who's got a Mac Studio, I'm sort of sad about. Uh, this would be my second consecutive desktop Mac that is a one and done after my iMac Pro. Um, I mean, your your MacBook Pro is doing the job. I would look at the... Yeah, I mean, I think the M2 Pro Mini is worth thinking about because that's going to get you maybe not the same performance, but similar performance as your MacBook Pro, and it'll be a standalone desktop, and it's got lots of nice ports. And uh, I I would... I would not count on the M M2 there, version of the been studio existing. Nothing. I I mean, Zero. you know, you and I keep our ears to the ground to this kind of thing, and I have not heard a, so much as a whisper. And the M and the M1 studio was like, there were there were reports about it out there. We didn't. Nobody knew exactly what it was, but there were things floating around that suggested that product might exist or some product that fit there. I've heard absolutely nothing about an M2 studio. So this is most strenuous applications, Lightroom Classic. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, an, an M2 Pro is going to do you just as well as an M1 Studio, and I don't think the M2 Studio is going to throw it over the top for you. I think I think you could use a Mac Mini just fine. Um, Floyd liked the back of the Mac Mini. <laughs> nice. There you go. It's Very like, nice. I mean, in some ways, the Mac Mini has always been this delightful space. The back of the Mac Mini has been a space where Apple is like, all right, go wild. Ports. <laughs> Like, yeah. I mean, the, just the go Mac to, Mini is yeah. a weird computer. As I wrote in my review, it's a weird computer for Apple, right? right? Like when it first came out, it was a concession in some ways for Apple to say like, all right, we're going to offer something that's a little cheaper. It doesn't come with all the peripherals that you need, right? It's it's to lure in PC users and all that. And who would have thought, you know, 18 years later, it's still just a critical part of the lineup. And it's still there, despite one of those, like, a computer that only sometimes gets updated every like four years or something like that. It's still a staple of the lineup. So I am glad that the, the mini continues to exist. Yeah. You said it's the, uh, what the, it's the mortar, the mortar. Yeah. The other computers might be the bricks, but it's the mortar. And I always talked about it as a release pressure release valve that like, we have a variety of Macs available to do almost anything you want. And if you don't, uh, find one you like, Here's the Mac Mini. Just yeah. go make it happen. Whatever you want. Put it Whatever in a, you want. Rack mounted in a server. Fit it in your car. Hook it up to your TV. Put it in your closet. Whatever you want to do. Whatever yeah. you what want. Server? I mean, I've had a, I have literally had a Mac Mini as a server since the first Mac Mini. And I've gone through, what, three or four of them now? Um, yeah. I think I had two or three on my, hooked up to my my TV for a long time. Yeah. my Mine currently is the 2018, so last gen Intel version. Mm. And it's pretty nice. And I'm probably going to stick with it for a while longer, but I have to say the, the the siren song of the M2 is calling. If for nothing else, then I know that it, how much less power it's going to use. Then yeah, efficiency, no then, no small thing. That Intel one, and I mean it's also that Intel one's running on Mojave. It's my, but what if I do need to run a 32-bit app? I don't need to, but <laughs> and yet it is. I have not updated it from Mojave. I think well, it's what the if reason you need to run a three gigabyte my, app. I think gigab gigabyte. Um, the, uh, I, I, it might be the reason that computer might be the reason that all my iCloud sharing is wrong because it might mm. be like, Oh, I can't update your real time oh, iCloud too, sharing. Cause you've got old. this Mojave yeah. Mac on your Apple ID. You need less hobby. De Je Jesse says Apple <laughs> pricing. Think about it, double it, and then add 20%. I'll just say, Jesse, you left out the part where you round up always, mm. always round up, round up generously. Um, Let's see. Uh, what Somebody else? asked about the 27-inch M2 Pro Plus iMac XDR. I think, well, there's a couple questions in there. Will there be a 27-inch iMac? Again, feeling like doesn't not. Seem like it. Apple went to great lengths in describing the Mac Mini to talk about, like, comparing it to the 27-inch yep. iMac. And I think that Apple would tell you at this point, now they could... Also, there are no reports that it's, although they have thought about doing it, that it's sort of like next year at the earliest. Yeah. And I think Apple would tell you, get a studio display and a Mac Mini. And that's yep. that's our solution for people who want that big 27-inch uh, yeah, display. which is, you know, as a, as a happy 27-inch iMac owner, I'm a little sad about, but I also have moved on. Um, I think what will be interesting when this M3 iMac, in theory, uh, shows up this fall, if that's, if the rumors pan out, is whether or not the iMac will get a pro configure option as the Mac mini did. I would bet on yes, but I bet on yes last time and it didn't happen. There was never an M1 pro iMac. 
Uh, so I, who knows? I, I agree with you though. I think that it would be absolutely logical for them to introduce, it might even be an M3 before it comes out Yeah. and have the iMac available with either the M3 or the M3 Pro. Yeah. But still just the 24 inch display. Oh yeah. I don't think the display will go up. I think Apple's very happy to have that. I mean, they've already got how many SKUs because of all the colors. I don't think they want to throw necessarily another. And I assume they have yeah. numbers that say. Most people didn't buy the 27 inch or it just didn't sell as well. Who probably, knows? probably right. And this being more modular, it lets people pick and choose whether you want a base model Mac mini or that hot. Again, any of those four, the two Mac minis or the Mac studios, it gives you some options there. I also wonder if that might be instead of it being, you know, they've got that really low end M1 iMac that we talked about with the fewer ports. Right, I wonder exactly. if instead the way they do it is just say, look, you can get an M3 or an M3 Pro, and that's really how they differentiate, very much like the Mac Mini. Like, yeah, I mean, exactly. you could even say, imagine that this Mac Mini is released as an iMac. That might be what it looks like. I, I think it will be pricier, though, because of all the stuff. So you're looking, like, well, you're looking at yeah. 2000 to 2500 You got to get the screen and the, and, the, and, the, screen. and the keyboard and the mouse, which brings us to Agent Monroe, who said, what did Jobs say when it was introduced? Bring your own, own display, display, keyboard, yeah. and mouse. I, I am sad, as I think I said elsewhere, that they, um, there's no... I, I am using... Apple also sent me a keyboard and a trackpad, so they gave me the extended keyboard, which is too big for me. Uh, and I am sad that they did not uh, revamp the keyboards with the USB-C or the, the Magic Trackpad or the Magic Mouse. I assume that's coming probably with the next iMac. I also am very amused because they, just for fun, they sent me a... Uh, the black magic trackpad. Oh yeah. Um, which I have a, my keyboard tray is black. And so actually I'll show this cause this is kind of funny if I can switch to my, uh, my camera view here for one second. Uh, every time I go out of my peripheral vision, I keep looking for it and I lose it. It's gone. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'll like look over like, ah, where's my trackpad? Oh, there it is. Okay. It's right there. Uh, it was very confusing for me for a while, especially because the keyboard is wide enough that everything moved over. So my hands have been in the wrong place. Uh, mm -hmm. It's terrible. Uh, it really drives me nuts. But we'll, we'll move back eventually. It's tragic. Um, let's see. Other comments here. Um. <laughs> Uh, there's one from uh, uh, Josh Muthamani down there, too, about uh, MKBHD made a bet while reviewing the M1 MacBook Pro that he would wear socks and sandals like Linus if Apple didn't add Face ID in the next update because of the notch. Either of you plan on any such challenges? Uh, what would be the, like, make a bet about... I wouldn't make a bet on Face ID. No. I'm surprised, but I wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't bet on Apple's... If they they have so I had a lot of chances to do it and they haven't done it, which tells me that if they really wanted to do it, it would have gotten done. By well, now. they've done their solution is that they've got the they've got Touch ID on the laptops and they've got yeah. the Touch ID keyboard now. Yeah, and they may feel yeah. like that's just good enough for them. Um, I could see them maybe doing it on an iMac or something down the road, but yeah, it feels like they're very happy to just I, go I with it the way it, it is. Yeah. Um. What would I? A new so let's the framing of this is it's a new feature that we would actually make a bet about being there when it arrives. Mm, mm, hmm. mm. That's a good question. I don't know if I have a good one. I'm They've knocked about off it. a lot of those features that we, yeah, that we talked. I mean, about. you could say uh, I mean you could even throw like a notch on like a or uh, what was it? oh uh, dynamic islands that's a software thing though dynamic island on your MacBook. Um, oh yeah, well, I mean, I did say that I, I could throw that out there, which is I think the dynamic island is going to be on all the iPhones this fall. I don't think they're going to hold it back. Oh, I don't think yeah, I don't think so either. There's a whole I want the, school uh, of thought about that that I'm I don't think I don't think it's coming this year, but I think it is coming. Uh, the action button on all the Apple watches. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I think it might coming. be this year, but certainly it I might think it's be happen. this year. But I just don't know if they've gotten the time to sort of tool up all the way to doing to producing it. But by next year, my guess is yes. So Kevin, who's not a symphony, said, feel free to send me that extended keyboard. I won't mind. I, I, I can't do that. It's Apple's. This is this is our way. So somebody was asking, actually, is there a way for you to keep the Mac Mini that you've got in, and just buy it from Apple instead of having to buy one and transfer all your data again? And as somebody who has reviewed many laptops and then had to buy many laptops, there is no path to keep the review unit from Apple. There's no program to buy those out and keep them 
you got to wipe them and send them back. And the good news Prob- is probably just as well. The good news is often the review uh, time frame is extended enough that you can get it, review it, get your thoughts together, put in an order, get your one that you own, transfer it and have plenty of time to send the original back to Apple. Yeah. But you got to send them back. They know. They know. Believe me, there was one point when I left Macworld, I actually got an itemized list of things that were in my name. And they said, can you tell me if you have these or if you don't and send them back? And if you don't say who has them. And there was a list of things. And I was like, the Macworld lab has all of these things. I don't have them. Talk to whoever is there. (laughs) Is there anybody there? I don't know. And then I've I've definitely once a year ish, there's a clean out where I send stuff back throughout the year, but sort of at the end, I look and say, what else is here that belongs to Apple that they haven't asked for back yet? And I just get rid of that. I, I, you know, put it all together and they know, they know all the serial numbers and, and all the air bills that are outstanding because they'll send you a FedEx air bill and the whole thing. So uh, we do have to send them back. I forget what this is. I think this date was pretty generous, wasn't it? It wasn't like it's April. April. Yeah. 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 That, so people kept asking me why, what, what Mac Mini I bought. <laughs> I kept being like, having to, oh, I'm still thinking about it. Now Now I can say, I have this for a while, so I'm going to keep using it for a little while and get my thoughts together. And as Jason said, and then I will order You'll them. have time. It doesn't, it doesn't seem as though they are particularly supply constrained at this particular moment. I haven't looked closely to see what the shipping times are, but my guess is probably not. Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate everybody being here and ask us questions. I mean, I, I wish that with this video and our hands on that we had the ability to show you like some dramatic change in the hardware. But like this, this MacBook Pro is exactly on the outside, exactly like the existing M1 MacBook Pros. They're the same um and the mac mini is the same way again yeah there's a very slight size change but otherwise like it's the ports you expect it's the shape you expect it's more or less the color you expect uh although no space gray on the mac mini so it's a very familiar other than being able to stack like a macbook air on the 16 inch and tell you and so you can see how huge it is but like and here's a here's an m2 ipad pro so there you go there's a there's a whole apple you get it all here's my iphone (laughs) you happy now uh so there's a lot less uh about that but the insides are interesting but yeah this is the what would you say dan i mean it's like the the it's like a the big step was m1 m2 was never going to be revolutionary this is incremental it is like by design it's just meant to be keep pushing it forward and finish the transition with some new products like the mac mini that yeah the high end one didn't exist before if you think about it, I mean, this is the traditional way that processor development has gone. Intel famously had their TikTok cycles, right, where they would every other year was sort of a, uh, the process shrink, I feel like. And then the years in between were just sort of like stop gaps. And I think it feels like probably Apple has done that same sort of ladder development system where every other year is more of a bigger. Because I think they said, isn't it the... It's the M3 that is the, is that the three nanometer process that they're looking at there? Yeah, I can't remember. There's yeah, a so. rumor that the M3 is based on the three nanometer process, which fits with my theory that the M3 is going to skip a generation of the A series, this current mm-hmm. A generation that by all reports, there was a GPU they were working on and that they didn't get in there. And whether it's a hybrid of those two, or it's literally just a jump to the next set of cores, um, kind of unclear. They could use like the older cores, uh, for CPU and a newer GPU, but it the 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 current process is the second five they call it four, but it's like the second five nanometer process on the uh, on the A series chips on the A sixteen, um, and a true three nanometer process would be a new process presumably A seventeen. I, I that's what I kind of think is that the the new processor this fall will be the basis for the M three, and I'm skeptical of the rumors that the M three Max will start rolling out this fall. It feels awfully abrupt um given that they've got to ship iphones but yeah i mean maybe not we don't you know we are learning more about what apple silicon looks like now based on uh you know an iteration and a half or iteration and three quarters but we're not we're not all the way there to understanding it by the way somebody asked um uh, jared asked about uh do they make you send back the apple pencils and like i i do try to send them back but i I also don't want them. Some of them don't go back. 
because I can't find them or whatever. These are the first gen Apple pencils. They did send me a new one. These uh, sat with no charging for so long that they're completely dead. They won't charge. So I just need to recycle them, which is sort of tragic, but there we are. Somebody asked about specking a, uh, what was it, trying to decide between, and they were, I guess, in the pounds, 32 gigabyte, one terabyte uh, mini or 32 gigabyte, one terabyte Mac Studio, which, of course, we talked about a little bit. But I, I was just pricing them out because I was curious myself. And it turns out, yes, if you get the base M1 Max Studio with 32 gigabytes and one terabyte of storage and you spec up the Mac Mini, with the better processor, 32 gigabytes and one terabyte storage. So pretty close. They are both in the US, $21.99. Right. They are exactly the same cost. But you're specking up the you're specking up the processor then. Absolutely. Because and it's still a little short. It's more cores, CPU cores than the M1 studio, but it's way fewer GPU cores. Yeah. Because it's only 19 as opposed to uh, and it's the 24. What? It's the same number of performance it's cores. It's the same number of performance cores because the higher M2 Pro has more performance yeah. cores. I mean, you can. You it's can, close. You can I get mean, them to brush against yeah. each other, right? But I, it feels to me like they are still sort of like just. I mean, just touching or slightly overlapping, I yeah. feel like is actually a pretty good. Like, I feel. There's going to be some. They would have done this if, yeah. if, there was, if there was a huge gap or there was a huge amount of overlap we could have, I think, fairly say that they kind of did it wrong. It yeah. feels to me like they did it right. Like, they like want, you can find places where they touch, but that's yeah, about it. Like, yeah. So I, I think, honestly, what it comes down to there, if you're really trying to decide between those, is how much graphics work do you do? I think that is the, the main deciding factor. Is do you want those extra few CPU or GPU cores to really, you know, is that going to make a big difference for you? But I think there's also a question. Do you, ask yourself if you need that higher M2 Pro. It feels nice, but like, do you need that many cores? Uh, I think, Jason, you made a great point on Upgrade talking about the efficiency cores and the fact that it's like quad core efficiency cores, that's going to do a lot of what you're doing every yeah. day anyways. So that in some ways has a bigger benefit potentially than even like, you know, the the stuff that only fires up when you're really doing intense work. Right, because so much of our, our time is downtime, right? When we're not doing yeah. a render or a or a Photoshop action or a logic bounce or something like that. And you're just sitting, staring at your screen and, and maybe something's running in the background and maybe there's some services running, but there's so much of that can happen on those efficiency cores. And that's where you're going to get the power savings and on laptops, you're going to get the battery extension is those efficiency cores are because they're pretty good. At some point in the WWDC, they actually talked about how the efficiency cores are actually pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They're just right. not as fast Super as those fast. performance yeah. cores. Yeah. All right, uh, it's top of the hour. We've been here for about an hour. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We're going to sign off. Uh, as always, go to sixcolors.com. If you're a member, check out the Discord. You're going to ask us questions there as well. And uh, and uh, check out our podcast. I just posted Upgrade, where we talked all about this. I imagine the rebound, we'll be talking about coming, it. Coming later this week. Later yep. this week. And, uh, and we also make many other podcasts, too. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, Dan. Bye, Jason.